Here's this new dash cam. It's a three channel dash cam and it's made by Tsfong. It's a model A99WB. You see that right there? And that's what it looks like in the box. This here is basically what comes in the box. So I'll tell you some of the stuff I like and some of the stuff I definitely don't like about this kit. In my honest opinion, I think that this dash cam looks very much like the exact one I have on my truck, which is made by a lot of other manufacturers. So as far as proprietary technology goes, I don't know if it's so heavy on that, but it does have some unique features, which I also share because I want to be fair to everybody. So the first thing I could say about this kit is it's nice the way they have the wire placement. So here's the top of the unit. Of course, over here, this is the third camera. So you got one, which is 140 degrees. You got one, 180 degrees. Then you have the third camera over here, which is a 1080p rear camera. So you got this connecting cables, which are all, you know, detachable like that. So it does make the installation. So if you run the wires from the back forward or forward back, of course, that does help a lot. And they give you plenty of slack. So that's cool. And I like that they're right angle. This one here goes left. This one goes right. So that's cool. So when you put it up on the dashboard, I mean, on the windshields, when you put this up on the windshield, it's going to be pretty cool. One thing I can say about this camera is it weighs a ton. This thing is so heavy. And I got to tell you, man, once I changed my windshield, I had it tinted in my truck. That thing never stayed on there like quite like it did the first time. Something about this tape that they put on these dang things. I'll tell you, once you change it, man, it's never the same. And it falls off all the time here in Florida, man. The heat, you know, the sun, blah, blah, blah. That thing falls off like a son of a gun. I hate it. So this one here is really heavy. So that makes me kind of scared. So you got your front camera over here, which is getting your, your front capture. And it does parking lot recording, you know, motion detection and all that kind of stuff, which you would expect with the Wi-Fi mode and all that kind of stuff. Real basic, all of them have that. Then you have this one over here, which is gonna be your interior. So if you have like an Uber or you like one of these kind of lift kind of people, that, rec that will record audio and video inside the cabin of your vehicle. All right, so that's, that's something. And then you got this one here, which will do your rear. So you got full coverage. That's pretty damn neat. So I want to say that that's, that's definitely pretty neat. And another neat thing that I can say about this thing is the multiple ways that you can connect power to this thing, because that's a pain point for most average people. They don't have a degree in wiring like a lot of my viewers do. So with this one here, you got this dealy, which will plug, it's called a smart like adapter. At first I thought it was like the Rove but it's not similar but different and i'll tell you how so with this one here again you have the quick disconnect so you can connect it wire to wire using these connectors for constant accessory and 12 volt power with these attached adapters which you can put to the fuse and fit them right into the fuse box so you plug that one in there one does the factory fuse and then it adds an accessory circuit for the dash cam which is really cool love these things can't really improve on those things at all but something else that's really weird about this one i never seen is it has an option to plug into the obd so this one here will get power 12 volts through the obd connector if you can believe that it's pretty neat and it's got a little led lets you know it's working totally totally unique never seen that before also never seen one come with the micro usb adapter which you can take into the house to record and watch your footing watch your recordings in your home computer with this little adapter which i must say i like and it comes with a 128 gigabyte card built into it which is nice it's already pre-installed looking good there and it's also got this little filter here for direct sunlight so that way you don't get blinded and, and lose good quality video when you really need it god forbid if you need it and the sun is in the right direction can destroy all your footage and also another way to connect this thing is with this which is your cigarette lighter so you got three different ways. You got this one, you got the hardwire smart adapter, or you could use the OBD. Pretty cool. I must say, I like that. This cable here is useless. I don't know really what the heck this thing is good for. Um, it's a USB-C, the standard USB-A. I don't know what the heck this thing is for, but there it is. So I'll take you out into the vehicle. I'll show you what this thing looks like when you turn it on. Oh, one more very important detail about this dash cam, I must say. It only has a stick on mount does not have a suction cup now that's a that's a negative so i'm out in the vehicle and i was ready to, to do my installation and i said let me use the cigarette lighter plug and i'll plug that in 
this vehicle doesn't have a cigarette lighter plug. Look at that. Most of these newer vehicles, this one is a 2024, it just came out. It's got a Type C and it's got a Type A. That's not going to work as 5 volts and this thing needs a transformer to operate. So what do we do? Maybe I'll just run a cable from the back seat for demonstration purposes. But again, USB A and C. And this 110 out, that's not going to help. And to make it worse, I said, let me just use the OBD connector. That'd be pretty cool, right? How neat would that be? Just plug it in. But this one here is a rental car and it has a tracker. So now when I disconnect this, they'll probably be calling me thinking I stole their vehicle. Uh-oh, I'm in trouble. So I got the OBD plugged in and I plugged in to the adapter and it seems to be working flawlessly. So no problem there, that's cool. So I can see there, got this little camera looking at me, hello. Then I got that one looking out front, and I have my rear view camera plugged in, but it's not giving me any images, probably because of a setting, so let me look into that. So while I'm using this OBD connector, the vehicle is off, right? You can see everything's off. And watch this. You can still turn it on, on and off this thing. I'm not liking that. I don't think your battery's gonna be liking that. So that's not exactly exciting. So if they don't, expect you to use the hardwired kit or you can't use this adapter and you use the OBD you're gonna have to turn this thing off man wait is that what I'm seeing huh. anyway let me put my AC back on let me show you the settings so here's the power button here's the menu up and down and the OK button which is pretty standard on just about every dash cam there ever was so when we hit menu you got your dash cam on the left and you got playback sound record and settings and if you hit menu again it takes you back to the main home screen which you can see the light is blinking it's recording and it's telling you the video output rating right there with the icons press ok and hold to open the wi-fi settings which is what we're not going to be doing we just want to see those settings so hit menu that's your settings menu lots of stuff here most of that stuff is pretty typical I mean, it's not a whole lot of exciting stuff here to look at. You got a screensaver, what do you need that for? IR LEDs, obviously, you need to turn those on and off for night recording, loop recording, which is, you know, the time. G sensor, which is to be expected in any type of dash cam, especially with monitoring feature. Um, formatting the card, which is just to clear it. Screensaver, language, Wi Fi. I mean, it's pretty simple to go through the menus. So I will say it's pretty easy to go through this menu. But I will say that it's a lot of redundant, unexciting features that I've seen a million times with cameras that cost literally a quarter of the price of this thing. So overall, I mean, between the weight, the size, um, the complexity, the wiring setup, and it's just not totally thoughtfully well done as far as other ones I've seen. Like, I've just done a Rove review, and that thing is just terrific. I love it. Easy to use, small... It just seems like whoever engineered it, they really took their time and put some love into it. This one here, that weight alone would kill me. I just couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't do it, man. The weight is just too much. But it does have a lot to offer as far as features go. Um, but you know, hey, you make your own decisions. But this is what I have to say about this camera, as far as what I can tell. You decide.